I would now like to invite uh, Stéphane Roussel from the European Circular Bioeconomy Fund to the stage, please. Hi everyone, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I hope you enjoy the conference as much as, as I do. It's kind of symbolic uh, that this conference takes place in a building that uh, bears the name of one of the aircraft manufacturers, so World Biomarket is kind of a sign of the times. Uh, I'm from ECBF, European Circular Bioeconomy Fund. I'm a partner in the fund. We are a 300 million euro fund supporting the transition from a linear fossil-based economy to a, a circular bio-based economy. So uh, we feel that we are at the right time, at the right place here in Europe to support and that uh, transition. There is massive uh, political stimulus uh, in the uh, COVID recovery plan at European level. 30% of that two uh, trillion stimulus is uh, targeted at uh, fighting against climate change and Europe has taken you know, the worldwide leadership in, uh, in its ambition to become climate neutral by 2050. So really right place. Also from an academic standpoint, we have great uh, uh, technology origination hubs in Europe and great support uh, to these, uh, uh, to these uh, academic hubs. And lastly, we see also uh, changing consumer patterns with the emergence among consumers of Generation Z, which is much more climate conscious than previous generations. And it goes into their food consumption habits, into their textile fashion consumption habits and so on. And so this transition is really uh, uh, matching uh, this younger generation ex expectations. So the right place at the right time. So as a fund, how do we do that? We do that with the backing of tier one uh, investors. So uh, first our cornerstone investor, the European Investment Bank uh, invested in us 100 million euro. And then over COVID times, we were lucky enough to be able to raise uh, 200 additional million euro and raised our, uh, the fund to our hard cap with prominent names from uh, all across the uh, food and agro uh, value chain from the upstream agro resource with Bungi uh, down to the brands, uh, uh, consumer facing brands with Nestle and also, you know, uh, uh, food ingredients, Corbion, Firminich, DSM now. And also uh, regional promotional banks and, uh, and national uh, promotional banks like InvestNL here in the Netherlands. We are very thankful for, uh, for their support. Uh, we, our investment strategy, because of the backing of the EIB, is uh, solely focused on supporting European uh, entrepreneurs that have the potential to become uh, global champions. So in, we invest in Europe uh, territory, EU27, plus 16 uh, Horizon 2020 associated countries, Switzerland, Norway, Israel, not the UK, unfortunately. They were not on the list in 2016 when our fund was... Uh, the mandate was initially established. So we are a growth stage investor, 300 million euro. We will invest in 25, 30 companies, 10 million euro per company on average. We are happy to, uh, to lead or call it deals. We typically syndicate with other VC investors. We have co-investments uh, with people in, in the room. Uh, we don't take typically more than 50% of an investment round, uh, debt and equity included. We are an impact fund, and I'll go back to this later in the presentation. We are a dark green fund per the European uh, Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation. It comes with, uh, uh, I would say, undertakings from us, also expectations from investors, expectations from startup companies that we, uh, that we support. Uh, we are here set up to originally bridge that uh, uh, late stage funding gap, this valley of death between, you know, first industrialization of technologies. We had a bit of a first discussion this morning about that. So what is the right pace to scale and uh, how to get to profitability when you compete with a very established uh, value chains? It's not, an easy, uh, it's not an easy topic. It's a topic that often requires, you know, co-construction with entrepreneurs that don't have the experience of bringing technology to markets. And one of the key differentiation of our fund compared to others in the market is first our industry routings. Uh, I personally have a lot of experience in the advanced materials and chemicals industry, industry and B2B, right? So, and B2B markets have their own dynamics, so investing at the right pace for uh, the market is, is, we see, very important. So we can definitely help entrepreneurs design plans that are fit with the market opportunities they, 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 they address. 
Uh, our investment scope, we describe in four investment verticals. So uh, nutrition, it's about making our food system more resilient and also address some of the newer generation consumption patterns towards more plant-based diets and, and so on. Then the agri-food, the uh, ag tech and blue economy vertical is about making our um, food production system more sustainable, help, help farmers actually make profit at the same time as they transition uh, towards more sustainable uh, practices. The same thing for the ocean. We have a part of that strategy which is about farming uh, in the ocean, and we haven't yet invested there. That's probably going to be a focus for the years to come. And two additional industry verticals around industrial biotech and packaging and construction uh, materials. I take a few examples from, from our portfolio. We are about 40% in our uh, capital deployment and, and portfolio, portfolio construction. Uh, we have 10 companies out of the 25 that we, uh, we want to invest in. Uh, taking a few examples here about the types of technologies and market opportunities we address. Uh, illicit plants, for example, when you think about plant-based um, uh, materials and car biogenic carbon, which is at the heart of our thesis, everything we do has to contain biogenic carbon, and that's how the circularity comes in. Uh, it can come in many forms. It can come into uh, the form of chemical extracts from plants, and in that case, I'll talk a bit about Elisi, it can come in the form of microorganisms that are specifically chosen for their characteristics. And it's, for example, aphia tapping in the soil microbiome, and in the form of macroorganisms like proteics, um, producing value-added proteins from, uh, from insects. So Elicit has found a way to formulate uh, plant extracts, so naturally occurring uh, signal molecules in plant, and make them in a cost-competitive way so that they can be then uh, sprayed on crops, on row crops, at, uh, at a price point that allows the farmers to make profit from this, to fight hydric stress. So it's really uh, an innovation that unlocks the potential of an entirely new class of actives whose effect is known in ag for decades but hasn't been uh, made at a price point that was fit for, uh, for application in the field. AFIA is tapping into, into uh, the soil microbiome to substitute chemicals in the field. Uh, and uh, they develop these uh, microorganisms uh, across various applications from biostimulants. Again there, uh, to biofungicide, bioinsecticide, and bioherbicide. Again there with a focus on, on row crops. And uh, lastly, we support here the last example, Proteix from the Netherlands. They are really the world leader in insect farming. Uh, they, have, uh, they are further ahead if you compare them to the, uh, to the French equivalents, uh, in insect and innova feed in industrial industrializing the technology uh, with their plant in bergen Opsom, so uh, not far away from here. We are an impact fund, so uh, our investment thesis is premised on, on carbon negative uh, business opportunities, so uh, businesses that remove carbon from our environment and help capture carbon in, in various forms. So that's the one objective we have chosen uh, under the uh, Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation and on other objectives uh, such as pollution prevention or then we look at uh, additional positive contributions as an upside and do no significant harm. So that's how we look at, uh, at impact uh, in our fund. The team is a very diverse team. So the headquarters uh, of the fund are in Bonn, Germany. Most of the team is based here, but we have satellites uh, to cover Europe. I'm based in France, Lyon. Uh, my colleague Anania is based in Barcelona. We uh, have uh, venture partners in Israel. We have, And so the team is very diverse with Again, as I've mentioned, an element of differentiation into B2B industry routing uh, and investment and sustainability. We are an e ecosystem player. Bioeconomy uh, was not something that we invented. So uh, obviously, we, we try and be a, a friend uh, to people who are adv advancing the topic at the European continent level. And so we do that by partnering with them. We are going to have our um, ECB forum. Uh, in Paris on June 6th, so you're most welcome to attend. If some of you are not invited, let me know. We can extend the invitation. Lastly, the team, some of my colleagues will be there with me uh, today and tomorrow. Clara Martinez uh, is uh, here for the two days of the conference, and Anania Mana uh, here. Anania will be here tomorrow. Clara is here the two days. So feel free to reach out to us. If you want to partner with us in this transition from a fossil-based economy to a circular bio-based one. Thank you very much for your attention.